Today, we're gonna to talk about something every sterile processing technician needs to understand, and that is the different tissue types. We'll also discuss their significance in surgery and how tissue types play a role in instrument selection. Why does it matter, you ask? It matters because knowing the different types of tissue helps you understand which surgical instruments are used for specific procedures, how delicate or aggressive an instrument needs to be, and why certain sterilization and handling techniques are so necessary. So whether you're preparing for certification or just want to be a rock star in your sterile processing department, stick around. This is going to be critical to your success. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Sterile Guy where we break down everything you need to know about sterile processing, surgical instruments, medical terminology, and more. I'm Brandon, your hostess with the mostess, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, you should probably get your shit together. Just kidding, but seriously, subscribe. And second, you might as well like the video while you're subscribing. Before we break down the different tissues, let's define what tissue actually is. Tissue, whether it's human or animal, is a group of similar cells that work together to perform a specific function. The human body has four primary types of tissue, and each one plays a critical role in surgery, and frankly, in our bodily makeup and survival. The four tissue types I'm discussing are number one, epithelial tissue, this is the type of tissue we see every single day, also known as your birthday suit. This is the body's protective covering, but epithelial tissue isn't just our skin, it is also our organ protective linings. Number two, connective tissue. This type of tissue allows you to stand up tall or wave to your friend. These are your structure and support, such as tendons and ligaments. Number three, muscle tissue. Besides providing the ability to win an arm wrestling competition, this also works to keep blood flowing through your body continuously. Yep, muscle tissue is known as skeletal and cardiac tissue. And number four is nervous tissue. Controls and transmit signals throughout the body, allowing you to quickly pull your hand away when something is burning hot. Nervous tissue includes the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Now let's go deeper into each one and see how they relate to surgery and sterile processing. First up, we have epithelial tissue. This type of tissue first lines the outside of the body, such as your skin. This is what keeps everything contained inside and protects our vital structures, keeping them safe from the onslaught of the outside world. It also covers the inside of organs, such as your stomach lining and intestines. It acts as a barrier to protect against bacteria, viruses, and dehydration. Like I was saying, the onslaught of the outside world. Let's talk about the surgical significance. Epithelial tissue is cut or removed in nearly every surgery. For example, with a laparoscopic cholecystectomy or a gallbladder removal, the layers of the skin, as well as the peritoneal lining, are cut in order to access the abdomen and work with the gallbladder. In a C-section or cesarean section, besides gaining access to the abdomen, the outer layers of the uterus are also epithelial tissue, which is dissected during surgery in order to create a pathway for the child to be removed. Now let's talk about instruments that are used. Scalpels. Scalpels are used for precise incisions through the epithelial layers. Electrocautery devices, often used to cauterize epithelial tissue to prevent bleeding. And why it matters for sterile processing techs. Because epithelial tissue is highly exposed to bacteria, instruments used in these procedures must go through rigorous decontamination before sterilization. This isn't to say that the rest of the instruments don't matter. It's just to say accessing through the epithelial layer adds more organisms to the game than just the patient's own organisms. Let's move on to connective tissue, which is the support system of the body. This includes, believe it or not, bones, which are hard structure. Bones are a type of connective tissue made up of cells and fibers. It includes tendons and ligaments which connect muscles and bones together to allow for movement when contracted or released. 
It includes cartilage, which is the shock absorbers within the joints. Cartilage is amazing when you're young and you can withstand all the jumping and running you can take. As you get older, that cartilage has usually taken a pretty good beating. Let's talk about the surgical significance. Many orthopedic and reconstructive surgeries involve working with connective tissue. Here's some examples. A total knee arthroplasty or a knee replacement. Surgeons remove damaged cartilage and reshape the bone. Rotator cuff repair. Tendons are sutured back together in the shoulder. The rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendons allowing for the shoulder movement and stabilization. ACL reconstruction or anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. Ligaments are repaired or replaced to restore the knee stability. Let's move on to instruments that are used. Osteotomes and bone saws. These can be used to cut bone in like the knee and hip replacements. Needle holders and suturing instruments used to stitch ligaments and tendons together. Drills and screws used to anchor connective tissue to bone when replacing the ACL, which is a very important ligament in the knee. And why it matters for sterile processing technicians. Bone and ligament surgeries often involve heavily contaminated instruments due to the tissue debris. Instruments used in orthopedic cases require extended cleaning cycles and ultrasonic cleaning to remove thick and hard to clean organic material. If you've worked even a day in decon, you know what I'm saying when it comes to ortho instruments needing extra attention. Moving on to muscle tissue, which is responsible for movement and comes in three forms. We have skeletal muscle, which moves bones and is voluntary, such as the arm leg muscles. We have cardiac muscle found only in the heart and pumps blood. Luckily, the heart is made up of involuntary muscles, so we never have to actually remember to beat our own hearts. And then smooth muscle, controls organs and is involuntary as well, so digestive tract and blood vessels. Let's talk about the surgical significance. In open heart surgery, the cardiac muscle is directly operated on. In abdominal surgeries, such as C-sections or hernia repairs, the rectus abdominis muscle must be cut and sutured. And moving on to instruments used, electrosurgical devices used to cauterize muscle to minimize bleeding. We have muscle retractors, such as wheat laner and Balfour, which can hold back muscle layers for visibility. We have tissue scissors, such as Metzenbaum, which is used for cutting soft muscle tissue. Now, why it matters for sterile processing technicians. Since muscle tissue contains a lot of blood vessels, instruments used in these surgeries need extra soaking to remove blood before sterilization. Hopefully, these are generally clean before you get them because your surgical techs are proactive and clean their instruments while used, but most of the time that is questionable. And finally, we have nervous tissue which controls all body functions through electrical signals. Let's talk about the surgical significance of nervous tissue. In a spinal fusion, for instance, surgeons must carefully navigate spinal nerves to avoid damage. In brain surgery, craniotomy, very delicate handling of brain tissue is required so we don't cause damage, which could impair other functions in the body. Let's talk about instruments used. Neurosurgical forceps. These are used for delicate nerve handling. Micro scissors, used in fine nerve dissection. Hemostatic clips, used to control bleeding near the nerves. And why it matters for sterile processing technicians. Neurosurgical instruments are often delicate and very expensive, requiring meticulous inspection before sterilization. These instruments also access an area of the body in which a popular, very hard to kill disease has the potential to live known as CJD or Crutzfeldt jacob disease. The chance of coming across CJD in surgery randomly is very slim, but you need to know this because if the patient has any form of prion disease in the brain, you need to protect those reusable instruments and make the staff use disposable instruments. You should never reach a point where this would affect you, but I've seen crazy things in my life, especially right now in 2025 America. So that was the four tissue types you need to know. 
which again are epithelial tissue, which is your protective barriers, connective tissue, which is your structural supports, muscle tissue, which facilitates movement, and nervous tissue, which is your signal transmission. Understanding these tissue types will make you a better sterile processing tech and help you work smarter, not harder. If you found this helpful, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment down below letting me know what stood out to you or if you have a suggestion for a future video. Stay sharp, stay sterile, and as always, I will catch you in the next one.